Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. Tonight, we're, we're, we're going to talk about uh, the title of my message tonight is uh, The Call of a King. The Call of a King. The Call of a King. Uh, the, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, we might have the scripture up there, that, oh, look at that, okay. And Jesus has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever, amen. He's made us kings and priests. Somebody, somebody say kings and priests. Now, we're going to lean into the, the king side of our calling as believers tonight. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so awesome how God gives us six books where we can learn from, from kings on the earth in the Old Testament. He gave us First and Second Samuel. He gave us First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles. And, and th- we see a pattern in these six, six books. Number one is there's, there's, there's two types of kings. There's, there's a king that, that would please the Lord and a king that was successful, that had, had a prosperous uh, kingdom. And there was a king, a type of king, that had a, a kingdom that was not prosperous. In fact, uh, the king would, would break down and bad things happen in that kingdom. And, and the, the common denominator was that the kingdoms that were successful and prosperous were kings that chose to walk in the ways of the Lord. And the Bible tells us on the other side that the kings that, that did evil in the sight of the Lord had kingdoms that had no protection, no, no prosperity, and no success. As I see that, gosh, I'm learning that I, I, if I'm called to be a king, I want to be a king that has a successful domain under me. Now, the, the, as we look into what a king is, because we've all been called to be kings, is that a king is a protector, a provider, and a conqueror. Now, you might be here tonight and be like, hey, I'm a woman, okay? I know you're a girl. You're called to be a queen, but you have king-like attributes. A king is called to be a protector, a provider, and a conqueror. Tonight, we're going to lean into the conquering side of the king, the conquering side of a king. And as we dive into uh, the conquering side of a king, somebody say, I'm a king. Come on, I'm called to be a king. It's important for us to understand how, how God introduces this whole concept of, of, of the conquering side of a king. Okay, from the beginning, the first words that God spoke to Adam and Eve were, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it, and take dominion. That is king-like language. Then, then God speaks to, uh, to Abraham. He says, go to a land that I will show you. And as he goes to the land, he will show him. As, as he's on his journey, God tells Abraham, as far as you can see, I will give it to you. That is king-like language, like you're going to take territory. You're going to conquer. You're going you're to dominate. Which, by the way, is an incredible principle that you and I can, can have and get as far as we can see. That's why I love Awakened Church. Awakened Church could also be called Vision Church. You know, you come on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night, and I'm telling you, you're going to leave uh, uh, church with a vision for your life, okay? But as far as you can see, I will give it to you. That was God speaking to Abraham. Then you see, fast forward to Moses, and, and, and God tells Moses, hey, I, I'm, I'm tired of the oppression of my people. I'm going to take him out of Egypt, out of bondage, to a land flowing with milk and honey, and if you're going to possess that land. That is king-like language. Then you have Joshua, probably the best conqueror in the whole Bible. God anoints Joshua to lead the people of Israel and, and possess the land, which, which by the way, doesn't it, doesn't it make you wonder sometimes, like, why does God have to make it so hard sometimes? Like, if God chose Israel, okay, the, the land, the Canaan and the line of the Amorites and the Jebusites to give to the Israelites, why wouldn't it, he just give it to them? Have you ever asked yourself that? Like if it's, for, if it's mine to be, to be possessed, if it's in my plan and my destiny to have that, why wouldn't God just give it to me? 
Could it be that God from the beginning, we see it in Adam, we see it in, Mo, in Abraham, we see it in Moses, now in Joshua, you go throughout the Bible. Could it be that God was trying to develop a conquering spirit on the inside of each and every one of us? Could it be, I'd just like to propose a question, could it be that there, there's meant to be a conquer that develops and rises on the inside of us for us to fulfill our destiny? And could it be that what if not fulfilling our destiny is because God is waiting on us, we're not waiting on God, God is waiting on us to step into the conquering side of my calling as a king. Because God could have been like, hey, I called, here's the land, just, just go ahead, but no. Joshua was taking the people of Israel to go and possess the land, and as he's about to cross the Jordan, he says, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you, which is a great principle. If you want to see wonders in our life, I like to propose tonight as well that we better live a sanctified life. It's not popular preaching, but it's the Bible, amen? He said, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. So the people sanctify themselves, and then Joshua goes on this journey of conquering not one king, not two kings, not three, not five, not ten, not twenty, thirty-one kings. I mean, it's like, okay, we get the message. There's a calling on my life to be a conqueror. You see it with David. You see it with, uh, you know, you, th throughout the, all the kings. And then you go into Jesus. Now watch this. Jesus, he comes to conquer sin and death, which is, he conquered the grave. Amen. Come on, somebody. The ultimate conquering, exactly. He, he comes back and he speaks to the disciples and he says, hey, I, I want you to be my witnesses for me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. That is king-like conquering language. So he, here's Jesus sealing the calling of a conqueror on each and every one of us. When we become believers, this is what happens. You accept Jesus Christ. You, you believe that he's Jesus. He's Lord and Savior. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. The Holy Spirit comes on the inside of you. Something gets, your spirit comes alive. Now you're awake and now you can see the kingdom. And you and I become little kings in this big kingdom. And there's an assignment on our lives and a domain that God gives us. And, and there's a territory that we, you and I, are supposed to possess and take territory. You've heard the vision builders is all about taking territory and transforming lives. Now, you, you and I have individual territory that we have to possess and take. I want to I speak into that tonight. Is that all right? A conqueror. The first point tonight is... The call of a king, the call of a king is to conquer evil and drive out wickedness. The call of a king is to conquer evil and drive out wickedness. I'm going to read this scripture to you tonight. It's 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 25. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 25. And, um, and it reads, now before him, we're talking about King Josiah, now before him there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, nor after him did any arise like him. I mean, that's a powerful description of a king, okay, on the earth. Now before him there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his mind, according to all the law of Moses, nor after him, nor after him did any arise like him. Listen, I would love for God to describe me like that. There was no one like him on the earth. Like he turned to me with all his heart and soul and mind and strength. Now let's talk about King Josiah for a second. King Josiah became king at the, year, uh, at the age of six or eight, I believe. Somebody talk to me. Who was a theologian? Eight, right? Was it eight? Eight, eight, eight years old, okay. Eight years old, and, uh, but he inherited some, some wicked patterns and behavior from, from his father, Amon. He inherited these behaviors. Now, at the age of eight, he was too young to understand. Then I think it was 18 years later that, that he realized what was happening, and he began to, to clean house and to conquer evil and drive out wickedness. Now, I can relate to King Josiah because as I grew up, I realized that I also inherited some wicked patterns and behaviors from my father. I inherited 
alcoholism, an addic- a, a life of addiction. Maybe there was drugs, never confirmed, but I think maybe there were some drugs there. No, my dad is in heaven now, and, but he's, he's with the Lord. I led him to the Lord a week before he passed. It was incredible. And, uh, and then I have a dream like a day after he passed away, and, and I see him, and I said, Dad, I thought, you were, I thought you were dead. He's like, no, I'm alive. And then I wake up, and the Holy Spirit reveals to me, hey, he's with me in heaven. It was beautiful. But, but I've realized that, that there, there was, I inherited alcoholism and an addict, addiction um, from my father, but also inherited sexual perversion, infidelity, and things like that. And, and I began to see, as, as I was growing up, and, and um, I, I began to see the manifestation of that inheritance. I saw how, I, I, uh, you know, the devil so sneaky and through some really um, wicked friends growing up, they would begin to show porn to me. And I actually was exposed to pornography at the age of four. And then my childhood and teenage years, I was just addicted to pornography. I also saw how at the age of 18, 19, I would go to uh, parties with my friends and I would just, you know, get drunk and drunk. And, and, and I, I didn't realize. And then I get saved. And my eyes are open. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I realized that I didn't have to live like that anymore. Not only did I realize that I didn't have to live like that anymore, is I realized that I now had authority over wickedness and sin, and I was no longer subject to sin. At the age of 19, I get saved, and God sets me free from pornography. I'm standing here today. It's been 21 years I've lived free from porn and sexual addiction. That's how powerful God is. And the same with alcoholism. I, I, you know, I, I remember the last time I overdrank, okay? And uh, you can, it's, if, if there's a judgmental part of the service, here we go. All right. It was 2016 when President Trump won. Okay. I see Ohio, bring me another glass. And I see Pennsylvania. I see all these things like, oh, my gosh, what happened? I repented. Okay. Amen. But I've lived free from alcoholism too. But, but, but I realized something that as a, as a, as a father I, I, and as a, as a husband and as a, as a king on the earth, I now had a responsibility which was to conquer evil and drive out wickedness from my domain, from my family. I realized that I had to become a curse breaker and say, this stops with me. I will not allow my children to go through the same things that I, that my dad and I had to go through. Under the anointing of God and the authority of God and the power of God and the grace of God. Come on, somebody. And the power of the Holy Spirit. I can see this these stops right here. I'm going to live free for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hey, the call of a king is to conquer evil and drive out wickedness. As you see it, I love what Pastor Jurgen says, what you tolerate, you teach. What you tolerate, you teach. What we tolerate in our homes, we teach. But a king, come on, on the earth, a king that, that, that lives under Jesus, a king that's, that sees evil and sees wickedness, that no longer will I allow and tolerate and teach this to my children or those that I'm leading around me. I'm going to be like King Josiah. Amen. Point number two is the call of a king is to conquer more territory and expand his domain. The call of a king is to conquer more territory and expand his domain. Look at, look at uh, these verses from King David. In 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. It reads, after this, it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Metheg, Amah, from the hand of the Philistines. Now watch verse 3. David also defeated Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his territory at the river Euphrates. Verse 13, and David made himself a name when he, t- when he returned from killing 18,000 Syrians in the Valley of Salt. <laughs> I mean, somebody say conquer. Now, it, it's important to understand that as we become Christians, there, there comes this, this uh, uh, desire on, uh, uh, on the inside of us, this ability to expand and take territory. 
And I believe that maybe one or two or three or maybe 5% of the people here tonight struggle with this. But I just, just for the sake of removing any shame or any lies from the enemy, I'd like to, to, to share with you tonight and preach tonight that you've been called to prosper. You've been called to prosper financially. The Bible says that God delights in the prosperity of his servants. And I'm tired of hearing the fake false prophets of the earth saying that we're going in a time of recession and we're in times of uncertainty. How many of you know that the promises of God, come on, still exist today even in times of uncertainty? And even in a time of famine, I can still prosper because it pleases the Father. Now watch me. It pleases the father when his children prosper on the earth. Second King says that Jesus, even though he was rich, he became poor, so that through his poverty, I might become rich. Now, this tweaks you a little bit. It's okay, let's go there, okay? What does it mean to be rich and what does it mean to be poor? Pastor, you're going to taught this many times. To be in the Hebrew, to be rich and to be poor, to be poor is to not have sufficient resources to meet your own needs and the needs of others. To be rich is to have sufficient needs, resources, to meet your own needs and the needs of others. Listen, I'd rather have that life. I'd rather have the life. The, the Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and God adds no sorrow with it. The Bible says that God will supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So wherever you find yourself tonight in your, in your journey in the marketplace, I'm here to remind you and tell you that there's a conqueror on the inside of you to expand and to take territory. There's a grace on your life. There's an anointing on your life that perhaps you're about to tap into tonight. There's a grace to take territory. There's a grace in, in a favor. It's so powerful and beautiful. God will give you favor and tell you who to call, where to knock on some doors, how to grow your business, how to apply for a promotion. God will speak to you because it pleases the Father. And I'm telling you, the call of a king is to conquer and expand and take territory. Listen, you, 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 you look throughout the whole Bible, okay, and you see that all of, of God's people lived a, a lifestyle of honoring God, and when they did that, they lived in abundance. You see it with Abraham, the father of our faith. The Bible says in Galatians that we are heirs according to the promises of God. And all the promises that God made to Abraham belong to us. And I'm living proof of the Bible. Listen, I had to conquer poverty in my life. Pastor Casey and Paige knew us when we were struggling financially. We lived in a one-bedroom apartment. Have I told that story before? My gosh, I'm, I'm like, we live in a one-bedroom apartment, and, uh, and I'm tired of it. I'm like so sick of it, okay? And I know maybe this is for 1% or 2% of you because we're in North County, hey, man. But I, I'm so sick of it, and I remember I, I go to... Um, after church, we go to Payway, and, and I'm standing there, and I can't afford a, an $8 meal. Now, fast forward to today, it'd probably be 25 okay? But back then, that was 8 thanks to Bidenomics. But, but we're, that's ending on Tuesday, amen? So I'm so, I'm so sick of it, and I'm, I'm just leaving. I'm like, I, I look at my bank account. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. Don't raise your hand. You can because the fresh church is fresh, real, and powerful. I'm in line, and I'm like looking at my phone to see if I had enough, you know, on my bank account. And then the internet was like struggling. I'm like, come on, online banking? <laughs> I don't want to get to the front of the line and then decline. Oh, I don't know what happened. Uh, I think it's fraud or something, you know. So I'm, I'm like, I see there were like overdrafts, so I, I go, I leave, and, you know, some of my friends start like, what, you're not going to stay with us? Thankfully, I lived uh, within walking distance, so I walk to my, I'm on my way to my house, and it's in, in the middle of it, I feel the Holy Spirit speak to me, and I'm like, God, I'm so tired of being poor. That's not what the Bible says. I am your servant. I am your child. I know the scriptures, and I tell you, I never felt poor, even though I was going through poverty. A, a poverty is a mindset that, and, and a spirit that you can embrace, but I always reject it. I said, I'm not poor, okay? I know I'm going through it right now, but I'm not going to embrace that mindset, amen? I said, God, the Bible says, and I began to quote all the scriptures, and Holy Spirit, what is this? I'm your son. Why am I going through this? And I just, all of a sudden, I just feel like the open, the, the, the heavens open, and the spirit of God just hits me, and I feel a peace, and right then I knew that I'd be okay. 
So we live in a one-bedroom apartment, and then, you know, we, um, it's part of my story later, but we, we launch a business, so we have to move down south, and, and, uh, and we're down south, and we're looking for a house, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, we find this house, and we're looking in the house, and I was celebrating. It was, there was two bedrooms in the house. It was not our dream house, okay, but it was a house, and I'm like, I'm so happy that I'm no longer in a one-bedroom apartment. I'm in the house, and I'm looking, and I'm walking in, I'm going to the, the master bedroom, and I go in the master bedroom, I'm like... This is amazing. I'll have a master bedroom. Come on. And I'm like, babe, come here. Babe, come here. And I realize she can't hear me. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm in a house now, and my wife can't hear me. I'm like, babe, come here. Because when I was in a bed, one-bedroom apartment, I, I knew that if I was in the bedroom, she was there. If I was in the living room, she was there. If I was in the bathroom, she was there with me. It was like the kitchen and the bathroom, we were all together all the time. But then God began to open some doors, but I'll tell you something. If you're going through it right now, I want to encourage you to do not embrace. This is so tempting to take on a victim mentality, and I guess this won't be for me. I guess this is my future. This is my portion. It happened to my mom, to my dad, to my grandparents. I guess I'm going to have to go through it, always live paycheck to paycheck. I'm here to cancel that in the name of Jesus tonight. And for you to take, come on, somebody, on the anointing that God has for you, you are called to conquer, expand, and take territory. It's who you are. You can't fight it. It's in your DNA. As you get saved, there's royalty in your veins, and you can't help yourself but to think, how can I grow? So my question would be, if we're not thinking like that, I wonder what happened. Maybe you need a friend to just tap you in the butt and be like, come on, wake up. You're a conqueror. You're called to expand. Can we, can we go, and I'm thankful for Dr. Matt, man, every Sunday, every Wednesday, it's like, wake up. I love it. Can we go a little deeper tonight? <laughs> yes. I, I, I want to go into what are some of the, the, the attributes that make a king and a conqueror effective, okay? Here's, here's the first one. An effective, is point number three, an effective conqueror understands that God works all things together for good. An effective conqueror understands that God works all things together for good. This is huge because you, you'll understand that as you go on a journey of conquering, listen, I've been in business for 13 years now, actually 14 years. And there's like, I've had to fight some battles, but I understand that God works all things together for good. It doesn't matter what I'm facing. If that is in the back of my, in my subconscious, if that is in, my, in the bedrock of who I am, that is in the, one of the foundational pillars of my faith, it doesn't matter what I go through. God works all things together for good. And I, I learned this when, uh, when we were going through it, and um, it, like God was shutting some doors, and we didn't, we didn't have, uh, uh, we weren't making much money, and things weren't working out. And I began to open my mind, like, what is happening? Like, isn't it, like, doesn't it stink when, uh, when, when God shuts doors or like, or like, 